Welcome to All Star Wrestling. My name is Vince McMahon, and I'm standing alongside the living legend of professional wrestling, Bruno Sammartino, who will lend us his expertise and color commentary this week. And there's a lot to talk about because scheduled here, we'll take a look at Crusher Blackwell, 424 pounds of him, Bruno. Amazing man, uh, Vince. Every time I see this guy, I'm amazed, really, because, you know, the first time I saw him, I thought, a guy like this, well, what can he do? But uh, he's got strength, and he's got amazing speed and terrific condition. Also scheduled in our feature match, I might add, Baron Mikel Sukluna will be here with us. He'll join uh, the likes of Moose Monroe and also another great partner. And those three will oppose uh, Dominic Dinochi, Dino Bravo, and Chief Jay Strongbow. Well, these are three good friends, uh, Vince, but really they make as good a, a, a threesome as you're going to find in professional wrestling. These guys, are they've, they've been together a lot of times in the past, and they make a terrific combination. And, of course, I'm looking for them to go all the way. Also scheduled to open up things will be Larry Zabisco against the big newcomer. So we shall return with the opening contest in a moment. Our ladies and gentlemen, this is All-Star Wrestling promoted by Phil Tucko, supervised by the State Athletic Commission, Howard McCall Commissioner, Francis Walker is the executive director, and the officials assigned, Chief Deputy Commissioner in Charge, Nick Santoro, the doctor in attendance at a ringside, Dr. John Woods, the timekeeper at the bell, Mike Mittman, and the referees for this hour of wrestling, Dick Worley, Mario Salvaldi, and my name is Jill McHugh. The opening contest it is scheduled for one fall with a 10 minute time limit. Here in the corner to my left from Gary, Indiana, weighing 305 pounds, making his first appearance in this arena, here is Bob Coulter. And in the corner to my right, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, weighing 250 pounds, it is Larry Zabisco. Larry Zabisco gets a big 300-pounder. Making his first appearance, Bob Coulter. The bell is about to ring, yes, and here we go with the action. That's it there by Larry Zabisco. This man, uh, if he can use his weight to his advantage, Bruno, he's going to be a force to reckon with, this big Bob Coulter. Big, big, powerful looking man, uh, Vince. I'm not too familiar with him, but uh, if, if he knows how to use his weight, as you say, and of course I'm curious as to how much uh, ability he really has, but if he's got something to go with that size, he could be a, <laughs> could be a very tough, tough man to beat. Zabisco breaking the hold. He hasn't done anything yet to show his strength or anything yet, really, because uh, Larry's been feeling them out and he's been moving around them pretty good. So far, Larry seems to show his superiority in speed, but we'll see what happens. Takes him down on that occasion, and uh, Coulter favoring his left arm a bit and now completing the referee. Coulter moves right in. Zabisco up against the rope there. And Coulter with a clean break. Zabisco was going to make certain it was going to be a clean break. 
This telecast is being brought to you by the authority of Capital Wrestling Corporation. Any rebroadcast or other use of the play-by-play -play description without the express written consent of Capital Wrestling is prohibited. Seems to me that uh, Larry is having no problem thus far in, in outmaneuvering uh, his opponent, Bob Coulter. Yes, he's outmaneuvering him rather easily, but I'm still curious. Well, now he's starting to throw his fists around, but I'm curious to see if this guy's got what kind of power he has because he seems so impressive and so huge. Coulter, a moment ago, uh, yes, and again you see Zabisco's head snapping back as Coulter uh, found the, the point there on the chin. Nice take down there by Zabisco. Two and almost three. Very, very close. I thought he might have got a tree count there, but of course this guy is big and he's got to have a lot of power with it, even though we haven't seen so much of it yet. And uh, he did get out. Seems to me, uh, this Coulter, he seems to be a little lethargic in there, though, Bruno. He's not moving with authority. He seems to, to be hesitating a bit. Yes, I've noticed that, although Nigel got him with a beautiful uh, bill there. But yes, yeah, so far he doesn't show much speed at all. Although Nye is taking the initiative here and he's getting the best of Larry, but Larry just got him with a beautiful leg lock. Hang on to the ankle is Larry Zabisco. Coulter will make certain that his uh, shoulders are not to the canvas. And again, grabbing the bottom rope, the hold will be broken. So far from what I see, Vince, this Coulter is a big, big man. But so far, I don't see him taking either advantage of his size at all. And uh, strength-wise, if he has any, so far, he's, he just hasn't uh, shown it yet. Zabisco keeping on top of Coulter. And I suppose that's uh, one of the things that you try and do when you are in there against a super heavyweight. And we say super heavyweight, anyone over the 300-pound mark or close to it. You have to attempt, I suppose, Bruno, to wear him down. You wear him down and keep him off balance, keep him moving. Hopefully that that size will eventually start working against him to where maybe, you know, he'll start running short on wind and then you get aggressive against him and try to pin him. We will see a super heavyweight, incidentally, later on in the program who claims that uh, no one can wear him down. He can go an hour, he can go as long as you like. We make reference to Crusher Blackwell. Well, so far, Vince, in watching Coulter, and again, maybe it's not fair because I haven't seen enough of him yet, but he weighs 305 pounds. When we're talking about Blackwell at 420 pounds, Blackwell shows me much, much more, more speed than Coulter, way, way more, and he know, the knowledge of using his weight and so forth. Uh, Coulter has yet to show me either how to use his weight or his strength or anything. Tabisco all over him, and Larry brings him out, pulls him over almost into a pinning combination. Ooh, rearranging his facial features a bit there as well. Coulter against the rope now. Zabisco snaps him out away from the rope, out in the middle of the ring. That's the place to have your man. Rolls the shoulders down, two and yes, sir. He cannot escape that time. Although with his weight there, Bruno, it was tough for Zabisco to hang on and maintain his leverage advantage. The left shoulder of Coulter Almost got up. It got up on the count of four. He almost escaped the pen. And the time, four minutes and 39 seconds. The winner, Larry Zabisco. Larry Zabisco on the victory in our opening contest. We shall return with the super heavyweight, Crusher Blackwell. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the next contest, a handicap match. It is scheduled for one ball with a 10 minute time limit. But first, I'd like you to meet the manager, the one and only, Color the Grand Wizard of Wrestling. I'm here in the corner to my left from Stone Mountain, Georgia, weighing 420 pounds. It is Crusher. And his opponent in the corner to my right from Macon, Georgia, weighing 230 pounds, Fireball Robinson. And his partner from Chicago, Illinois, weighing 220 pounds, Steve Cooper. Here we have the principles in a special handicap match. The total combined weight of Robinson and Cooper is 450 pounds against the 420 pounds of Crusher Blackwell. And here we go with the action.
Cooper made a lunge. Now Robinson makes a lunge. Blackwell protecting his back against these two men. And look at Blackwell has both men in the corner now. Oh, my. The whole ring shakes as Blackwell applies the poundage. 420 against 450, oh, Vince. That's what it is, oh my. Blackwell in total control. And of course now in a handicap match, the thing to do when it's two against one is for, for one man to attack from the front or the side. Ooh, my, he really went out. And the other to attack from behind. And I don't care who you are, if you can get two men in that position, you're in trouble. Absolutely, Vince, absolutely. But right now, it's not Blackwell in trouble. Just getting up there is Robinson on the outside. Blackwell apparently helping him in, leaning against him now, with his head between his legs. Robinson comes over to help out. All three men against the rope. The referee trying to break it up. And I think Mr. Blackwell's got things pretty much under control. Cooper and Robinson are both in bad shape right now. Forearm smash to the chest has no effect at all on Crusher Blackwell. Headbutt and down goes Cooper. Vince, it's even silly to try to give a guy like him a, a forearm smash in the chest in the waist. He's just got too much, too much meat to him, you know, to penetrate through to, to really to do damage. If you're gonna do it, do it around the head area, the jaw, the, the neck, you know, but the, the, the chest and the stomach, you're just wasting your time. Bruno, when you're facing a big man like this, notwithstanding uh, Blackwell's extraordinary skill, uh, surely he's a really big man. And if you could get a big man off, off his feet, then I guess maybe things kind of even up a bit, don't do they not? You get him down on the mat, he's at a, a definite disadvantage because he's got so much weight to move around that, that it's difficult. And if you, if you, you can outmaneuver the guy then by tripping his leg, his arm, whatever, keep him off balance, you can keep on that mat. And at this point, of course, Blackwell, he says he's got great condition, but at this point, he'd better have great condition because this is the way to really wear him down and tire him out. So Cooper and Robinson, doing their best here, attempting to wear down the 400-pound frame of Crusher Blackwell, and thus far, they have not been too successful. But <laughs> I'm sure everyone heard the uh, cry of Blackwell a moment ago. He said, how do you like that, Bruno San Martino? Well, I, you know, I, I hate to see these two fellas taking such a beating, but I'm sure that they like it less than I do right now because they're the ones who are being punished. Naga knocker by Blackwell. It's an experience on these uh, fellas' uh, side. A uh, bad experience. Yeah, a bad experience, right. But if they were more experienced, they would do as you said. You know, one be in the front, one in the back, or the sides, but you don't come both facing him like they're, like they're doing. There's just, just no way you're going to do anything to Blackwell. I think, really, they stand in awe also of the credentials of Fisher Blackwell because uh, you're not just going in there against a, a seemingly big blob. You're going in there against an extraordinary athlete, a, a, a phenom, really. He is just incredible. No question about it, Vince. I've seen a lot of big men, as I've said a number of times. Here comes a big slam. Blackwell just holds him up there. One arm slam. Blackwell over there. Cooper kicks out to the chest. Has no effect, and he's going to pay the dues. Forearm smash to the chest. Crusher Blackwell having no problem at all against the combination of Cooper and Robinson. Robinson now on his feet, perhaps not for long as he is shoved to the corner. Both wrestlers are just rather limp now. They're ready for the They're both the picking. Yeah. Just a matter of time. Blackwell knows he's got everything. Oh, wow. wow. You see that. Crushing power slam. And if anyone can use that power slam to his advantage, it's Crusher Blackwell. He just have scooping now. Robinson again. A double. Uh oh, trouble. Look at this. Both men down. Robinson and crushing down across the head of Robinson. Over for the cover, covering two men at one time. The count of three. Blackwell victorious in the handicap match. And there was very little doubt after this match was underway as to who would be the victor. Blackwell defeating Robinson and Cooper. And a time, five minutes and 21 seconds.
Here is the winner, Crusher Blackwell. Crusher Blackwell, victorious, stepping over his opponents on his way to victory. Let's take another look now. Crusher Blackwell polishing off Cooper. Now, remember, he was just on the, the receiving end of a power slam. There, he just merely slammed Robinson. Blackwell says, hey, there's no problem here. I have it well under control. And Robinson looks up. And he sees, coming down at the speed of gravity, the 420-pound frame of Crusher Blackwell. Standing to my right, ladies and gentlemen, the Grand Wizard of Wrestling, the manager of Crusher Blackwell, and of course we just saw Crusher Blackwell victorious once again, defeating not one individual, but two individuals in the handicap match. And Grand Wizard, before a match begins, when you enter the ring with Crusher Blackwell, Blackwell, after the introduction, lifts you ever so gingerly over the top rope, and I bet you really get your jollies with Blackwell lifting you up that way, do you not? I do indeed, but I get even more jollies when I see the Crusher defeat not one man, but two men. But as you can see, the Crusher has not even broken a sweat. McMahon, we want three men, and from there on in, add a man every time. Add as many as you want, and the Crusher will defeat each and every one of them. We started with two, now give us three, then four, and keep on adding. And then maybe, just maybe, the Crusher will have a good workout and a chance to break a sweat. He didn't have it tonight because two are not enough for a man of the power of Crusher Blackwell. Well, these, of course, were two inexperienced wrestlers, Crusher Blackwell. You were very alert to protect your back, but uh, nevertheless, if you were in the ring with more experienced wrestlers, I'm quite certain perhaps things would have been a little different. You keep harping. Every time I come out here, I perform. Everybody knows that I'm a great star. I'm a great wrestler. I'm a great man. I'm strong. I'm big. I'm fast. And every time I come out here, you knock me. And let me tell you one thing. I'm getting sick and tired of it. Why don't you bring some competition? Why don't you bring Bobby Backlund out here? Why don't you bring Dino Bravo? Why don't you bring some competition? You keep telling me there are no competition. Why don't you get in the ring with them? Here? Mr. Blackwell, obviously- Answer my question. Why don't You're you get in the ring with them then? Well, why don't you bring the competition? There's going to be plenty of competition. I'm quite certain after you get it, perhaps, Mr. Blackwell, you'll change your tune because people are lining up for Crusher Blackwell. Is it not true that many individuals yeah, wanted up. to sign? You've seen it yourself. How long did it take me to defeat one of your great stars? Nine seconds. That's how long. Was he inexperienced too? You were sitting ringside. Was he inexperienced? From behind, Mr. Blackwell. From you behind. When opponent. you get in the ring, you better watch behind, beside, everywhere else. Because this is something. It's competition. When you go to the ring, you've got to watch your opponent at all times. You don't see me turning my back without watching, so he shouldn't. And anybody that gives me a half a chance, I'll take advantage of it. Because I come out here to win. I don't come out here to make friends. I come out here to make money and make a name for myself. And winning is the best way I know of. You have done just that, I'm sure, the Grand Wizard, and you are becoming quite wealthy with your victories, a long string of victories, I might add, undefeated thus far here on All-Star Wrestling. But nevertheless, is it not true that as much as you and Blackwell boast of your extraordinary skills, and as much as you ask for more competition, is it not true that a number of contracts have been placed before Crusher Blackwell with extraordinary athletes at the, who have already signed, and Blackwell refused to sign? That is an out-and-out -out lie. That is typical Backland propaganda sponsored by you. There isn't, and I want the Jerry Blackwell to listen to me and tell me if I'm wrong. There's not a man that walks the earth today that the Crusher is afraid to meet. There's not a man you're not anxious to wrestle. Is that correct, Crusher? Anyone? Let me tell you one thing, and I'm a man of my word. I issue a challenge right now to anybody, anywhere, to get in this ring right here on TV, and I'll even take $5,000 out of my own pocket if any wrestler in this area can body slam me right here on TV with anybody, and that's an open challenge. Now, you bring them on. Who am I scared of? Just bring them on.
And that, McMahon, includes your cohort behind the microphone, the man I'm pointing at right now. $5,000, San Martino. Go ahead and slam him. Now, is that an open enough challenge? Is that open enough? Does that sound like we're hiding? Does that sound like we're dodging anybody? There is no one this man fears. There he is. Bring him in. Bring him in. Bring him in. There's no hiding. There's no dodging. Blackwell. We're ready. With an open challenge, we'll find out if the challenge is answered, and we shall return with more wrestling action in a moment. This match is set for one fall with a 10-minute time limit. Introducing first the manager, the manager of champions, the Grand Wizard of Wrestling. And now the participants. From Stoneham, Massachusetts, weighing 228 pounds, Fred Marzino. And his opponent, from Houston, Texas, weighing 314 pounds, the king of wrestling, Ernie Ladd. There's a good look at the big cat. 314 pounds of him, the self-professed king of professional wrestling. And not too many would, would argue face to face with uh, the big cat as far as that's concerned. Ernie Loud against Fred Marzina. We're ready for the action to commence. Butt there, and you see Lad making gestures. He is making gestures and talking to the Grand Wizard a moment ago. Marzino giving a lot of way in size and experience here to the Big Cat. Six feet nine inches, a man who is a giant in his own right. Marzino caught in the corner, another headbutt by the Big Cat. A smile in the face of Ernie Ladd. That's one of the principal things you will note uh, that Mr. Ladd does with quite a bit of frequency. Ladd smiles, jeers, and whatever it is he can do to taunt his opponent and gain any type of edge, be it physical or psychological, Ernie Ladd is going to do it. Marzino with a gamely making his way back to the apron of the ring. Big Cat walking over and has him and snaps him in the hard way. Marzino scooped up with these, and when you fall from that height, when you fall from any height, but especially that height, it's going to hurt. Well, it's quite a bit of measure. Again, the big cat now. Ooh, my, he ever chop his man almost in half there. Marzino whipped to the ropes. There's the big cat waiting for him. Over 300 pounds of him. Marzino may be unconscious. My goodness, if he wasn't before, he's bound to be now. Down for a one on the two. We have a three count. Big cat Ernie Ladd victorious over Fred Marzino. The big cat squashing his opponent here. The time of the match, three minutes, even, and your winner, the king of wrestling, Ernie Ladd. Ernie Ladd, victorious. We're going to have a word with the big cat if we can. We only have a moment, but nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's only befitting that since this 
giant of a man, six feet nine inches, has returned here to the Worldwide Wrestling Federation. What would you like to say to the fans of well, the Well, I'm telling you one thing for certain. I'm, the Grand Wizard has, been, has recruited me again to come back and do a job in the New York area. He's trying to get Bruno San Martino back in here so I can beat Bruno San Martino and go ahead over bigger and better thing. I know you don't like that. You're talking all out the side of your neck. You get on television and holler, hey, yik, yik, yik. Backlund, oh, yik, 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 yik. Backlund, Backlund is in a lot of trouble. He told me there's a man in this the territory king. that's the champion that's really so just waiting to make Ernie Ladd the king, the champion. He has geared me the championship, but we, we would like to beat Bruno San Martino first in Madison Square Garden. Bruno Backlund, and we shall return as we continue in a moment.